I think one of the key differences when we think about intent-based networking or intent-based automation in general versus kind of your classic style is one of what are your inputs to the system. So in your classic model, what we've been doing for kind of the last two decades is my inputs to the system are basically configuration snippets. That's kind of a way to think of it. And we build a merged configuration off box and we eventually push it down to the box. But you're dealing with device primitives, so you become an expert on those device primitives. In the intense side of the world, it's more of a top-down approach. So we describe business outcomes. We want to connect these two endpoints and apply some policy that means that they can talk to each other and they can't talk to other things. This is kind of the big shift with intent-based automation, one that it's kind of business outcomes versus kind of that bottom-up configuration approach. The other key aspect to intent-based automation is one of uh, closed-loop automation. So when I set something, yeah, I can't guarantee that it's always going to stay set, especially in a world where we have multiple controllers talking to these different devices. We have operations teams wanting to come in and make changes to these devices potentially out of band of our controllers. So being able to handle that configuration drift in a way that it doesn't get unmanageable over time is another key component to intent-based automation. And the general outcome here is one that you get uh, more agility in deploying services. You no longer need to be an expert on, on kind of how things work. You just need to know what you want to do. That's kind of the really, really, really big shift here. Promotes agility, promotes reliability, all those key things that we want to see in kind of modern automation platforms.